Hey there everybody, my name is Kayla and I have an eight-year-old son with autism. I created this channel as a space to share my resources and experience in hopes of improving the lives of families living with autism. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you the tips and routine that we do every single night to get Shane in bed on time and falling asleep quickly. You need a routine for your child to wind down and to get ready to go to sleep. That routine can be a visual schedule, which we have used in the past. I'll leave a link to the one below, which lists every single step the child does, like even as soon as they get off the bus from school, or it can just be like a verbal thing that you do, but you do it the same thing every single night in the same order. Whatever works for your family, have a routine that your child can get used to and look forward to starting. We have used visual schedules for our nighttime routine extensively in the past, but we're currently at a point now where Shane pretty well knows what is going to happen. He is not allowed anything to watch 30 minutes before bed. He can do whatever he wants. You know, he can walk around, he can look at toys, he can look at books, he can talk with mommy, play with Play-Doh, but he cannot watch anything. I find with Shane, if he's watching something right before he hits his bed he's not going to want to close his eyes he's amped he's excited he's reliving what he watched and he needs those 30 minutes to just sort of unwind and relax after the screens go off i'll put on some calming music just low on the speaker nothing crazy i prefer nora jones a lot of families play classical music whatever you will enjoy use that sort of calming music to set the mode for the beginning of your nighttime routine Next, we head into the bathroom to wash his face and brush his teeth. We do this every single night because at some point Shane was giving me a hard time to do either of those things. And I found the more regularly I did it and didn't give in to his temper tantrum, that he got used to the process. Some nights he's more readily available and I can really get in there with the toothbrush and help him. And other nights it's more of just like a quick one. No matter what it is, I always insist that we do it just so we don't break that routine. After we've washed up, I always read a book to Shane. Even on nights when I'm super tired, I'll just read the shortest one he has. But often I'll ask him which one he wants to read and we always make sure to lay down in bed together, side by side, we do a little cuddle and we read a book. Shane also has sensory processing disorder, which makes it a little bit difficult for him to process out any of the sounds that are happening around him. Maybe it's me watching TV in the living room or people talking on the street outside. So because of that, we use a little bit of white noise. We literally just put on a small fan on low and it's I set it underneath his desk and I face it away from him so he doesn't get cold, obviously. But that's all he needs. Uh, I know a lot of kids will use different sort of uh, noise canceling or so yeah, noise canceling machines and you know, the sounds of oceans and the sounds of the wind blowing, whatever works for your kid. If they are needing to process out some of the sounds that are happening in the household, something like a noise canceling machine or just a fan like we use might help. Huge and very integral part of our sleep routine. And this includes helping Shane go to sleep as well as staying in bed until he's supposed to and waking up on time is a sleep training clock. I discovered these during COVID. Shane's schedule was just all over the place and I was suffering. I was exhausted all the time and so was he. And my boyfriend actually did a Google search and came up with what he now, what I now know is a sleep training clock. There are many different versions of them. The one I use is this one. We got it on Amazon. It's so effective. It was about 70 bucks, which is a bit of an investment, but for sleep, it was way worth it. Um, this clock wakes Shane up in the morning with a color-coded system. So it goes green when he's allowed to wake up, but it also goes amber before he wakes up. And that would let him know, okay, like I can just stay here a little bit longer and it's gonna go green soon. So he knows like soon I'll be able to wake up versus just like laying there wondering what time it is, what time it is. You know, this is especially important for the kiddos who don't know how to tell time yet. And the colors coded system makes it easier for them. Like he'll open his eyes and then see it's not green yet and I've, he'll just go back to sleep. It's amazing. It also has like a little one plugged in. It also has like a little smiley face when it's a wake up time and it's like a little sort of neutral face when it's sleep. It's amazing. It's well worth the money. I'll leave the link to this one below. We bought it again on Amazon, but they have different versions of it. Like just find one that works for you having Shane stay in bed until his alarm tells him to get out has helped us so much. He used to wake up at like 5 a.m. during COVID and even other times and he just had no concept of time, you know? And I felt bad, but I was like exhausted and I just wanted to go back to sleep. So a sleep training clock is a huge part of our successful sleep routine. The last two tips I have for you are not necessarily things that are part of our every single night routine, but they are things that I've done in the past and I know are really effective. Number one, 
Look around your kid's room. Are there any major distractions? Are there toys that have reflective surfaces that could be really distracting to them when they're falling asleep? Is there an alarm clock that, uh, I don't know, flashes once in a while? Is there a toy that makes a little noise sometimes because the battery's dying? Things that me and you may not really even notice when we're trying to fall asleep. For a child with autism who's having a hard time falling asleep and maybe even has sensory processing disorder, these things can really keep them up. I actually have a video that lists like, I think over 10 things, maybe even more, that could actually be stopping your child from sleeping that you probably wouldn't even think about. I'll link that also below. When Shane was really young, like two and three years old, Getting him to bed was a disaster. Every time I turned the TV off and said it was time to go to bed, he would throw a temper tantrum. It was incredibly annoying and exhausting for both of us. I realized very quickly that when I would say to him five minutes before bed or it's time to go to bed, he would first be very surprised by it because he didn't have a very good concept of time. And secondly, five minutes meant nothing to him. It could have been 20, 40, 50 minutes. And honestly, Shane's eight and his concept of time is still not that amazing. So I started to actually use a little timer, something like this one. And 